Hello there, lovely folks of YouTube, Ren here. So, it's so hot outside, I have to work inside, so I figured it's finally time to do a book review video. I did one of these once before. Um, I've been reading a lot of books. I haven't been reviewing them, but I've been reading them. This is one that I read a while ago. This was one that, after my first book review video, I was recommended this book by uh, user Moon Rabbit Curios. And it was a book that I'd had on my Amazon wish list for a while, and their post basically prompted me to finally buy this book, so thank you for that. Um, long time coming, I'm finally going to talk about this book. Um, <clears throat> the book is Under the Witching Tree by Corinne Boyer. Okay, um, Corinne Boyer was, is, was, is, is, is a folk herbalist that's been working for 20 plus years. I'm getting all this information from basically the inside flap of the book, basically. Um, and her own website, uh, which is maplemistwood.com. So folk herbalist, 20 plus years. Uh, other books that she's authored include Plants of the Devil, which is also on my wish list, haven't bought it yet. Um, and then this book is actually the first in a trilogy. The second book is already out, which is called Under the Bramble Arch. I have read that book. I'm going to talk primarily about this book. Everything that I'm going to say about this book is also going to translate to Under the Bramble Arch as well, even though I'm not going to talk specifically about it. Um, they're written in the same format with the same style of writing, the same type of information, just to focus on different plants. So this book, first off, I'm just going to say flat out, I really love this book. I really, really do love this book. It has some problems. All books do but overall a plus um this is one that i'm definitely going to keep i mean i keep all my books but i'm definitely going to keep close and i'm probably going to be going back and referring to numerous times um it is a nice looking book it is very dense it does have some photographs in there um illustrations of each of the plants that she covers um, I like the way that it's organized. So she covers 20 trees in this book and she organizes them by season. So five trees per season. And um, basically like sh she puts them under the season at which those plants are sort of like at the peak of their power. For each of the trees, she gives folklore for those trees. Loads of folklore folklore that some of it you're n probably not going to find anywhere else. I can't even imagine how much research she must have done to find all that folklore, but there is a ton of folklore. Um, not just European folklore, but also Native American folklore as well in a lot of cases. Um, there's a lot of folk medicine uses for these plants. Um, and then she gives examples of her own personal practices that spells that she has incorporated these plants into. Um, one of the things I also love about this book, she has several appendices at the back, which, what is it? There's gotta be like eight appendices at the back that give a whole lot of information into just general workings with the plants themselves. Um, not looking specifically at the plants, but just general like how-to kind of things. So like some of the things that she talks about are like, rendering animal fat and how to use that fat to infuse uh, plant matter into that fat in order to make like an herbal salve. Uh, she talks about how to harvest plant products. She talks about using plant products in fermentation, just a lot of things like that, just general practical how-to kind of stuff, which is also really worthwhile. So let me go into the pros and cons on this book. Okay, so pros. Obviously, I've already talked about the folklore. Huge amount of folklore, wide variety of sources. Um, everything that she talks about has recipes, charms, rituals, like a wealth of practices for each of these plants. Uh, the other thing that I really like too is she talks about a lot of plants that are not commonly talked about. So for example, uh, linden is one of the trees that she mentions in this book. Um, which is not something that a lot of people talk about. It's not something you see in a lot of magical practice books, but it's, it's a lovely tree. It's one of my favorite trees. I actually, when I lost my oak tree in the front yard, I made sure to replace it with a linden tree because there aren't any around me and I wanted to make sure that I had 
a linden nearby. So that was the only way to do it. So the fact that she actually covers that is amazing. Um, other things like I've actually learned a lot from this. I, one of the things that I loved about this book is that there's a particular tree, which in my case is more of like a shrub, that I was seeing all the time on my walks in my neighborhood, but I could I didn't know what it was, and it was thanks to this book that I finally identified that it's alder. I all I knew is that it was a weird looking bush that looked kind of like a hazel, but also made cones, and I couldn't parse or make sense of what that was. Now I know, thanks to Corinne Boyer's book, it's an alder, and I know exactly what folklore is associated with that tree as well, which is amazing and really expanded my practice a lot. So thank you for that. As you can tell, I'm gushing about this book a lot. There are some cons, despite my gushing. So let me talk about those. Um, first off, and this is, it's a... I'm listing it under a con, but it's something that I completely understand and I sympathize with and is inescapable, really, in any time you're going to be talking about any type of plant-related practice, and that is that um, she lives in the Pacific Northwest. So her relationship with these plants are going to be with the plants that appear in the Pacific Northwest. and. A lot of the time those plants are very different from what other people may have in their area. So I live on the East Coast. One of the plants that she delves really highly into is um, the, the Western Cedar, Western Red Cedar. We don't have those trees here, just flat out don't. So like everything that she's talking about in regards to cedar is related to the Western Red Cedar which is different from the cedar trees that we have here. I have the eastern white cedar is the one that I see most commonly, and that's the one that I use most commonly in my practice. It's a different tree. Some things, there's some overlap there, but, you know, it's not the same. So, um, because of that, you know, this, understandably, the scope can be kind of limited, you know. She talks about what she knows and what she practices with, which is going to be what she has in her area. I completely understand that. That's what I also do in my line of work, I guess you could say. I'm talking about what I have, you know? I can't talk about plants I don't have. I don't feel like that's right. So it's a bit of a limitation, but it's an understandable one. Um, so <laughs> one of the things I do want to mention, um, some of the charms and recipes that she gives are crazy complicated like ridiculously so like some things are very simple there are some things that i'm like oh yeah i would definitely do that and the other things are i looked at it and i just kind of like what the fuck so uh one for example is um she gives this charm this recipe that i'm looking at my notes here because i'm i want to make sure i get this right the recipe calls for rattlesnake vertebrae raw opal petrified wood, um, like a cow's horn, and like other, a whole bunch of other stuff on top of that. But like all these really crazy, hard to find, expensive ass ingredients um, to all be like powdered together in a mortar and pestle and then buried for one year under the roots of a particular tree. And I'm like, first of all, there's no way I'm going to remember to go back after a year. <laughs> like, I'm, I can barely remember what I did last month. I can barely remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> I'm not going to remember to go back and dig up my crazy expensive uh, spell work after a one year period. Um, but also, like, where would I even get a rattlesnake vertebrae? Like, I, I mean, I guess I could probably order it from eBay, but that just, that seems to go against, like, my whole philosophy of witchcraft, which is basically use what you have. So, yeah. Some of the spells are really good, some of them are just bananas like that. So, I would definitely put that in the con category. Um, and then, <laughs> um, the last thing I'm going to mention, just because it, it really... I'll put it under the cons, but it really just tickled me. Um, my little note here literally says, obsession with bear fat. Um, she really does, like, 
over and over states that basically anytime you're making an herbal salve or fat infusion with herbs or anything like that, she prefers bear fat. She needs the bear fat is the bee's knees, it's the best thing to use, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, that's probably a Pacific Northwest kind of thing because I wouldn't even know where to begin to get bear fat here on the East Coast. The only bears that we have are the black bears. Most of the black bears, like, I don't know that anyone's actually hunting them. Most of them live in the national parks where hunting is not allowed. So, yeah, we don't have bear fat here. Um, and of course, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, then you probably don't want to be rubbing bear fat all over yourself anyway. So, um, yeah, she does give some alternatives, but just that's it's a quirk that amused me. I don't know. I just wanted to mention it. She's a little, uh, a little obsessed with bear fat. So <laughs> anyway, other than those things, really, that's the only the only cons I could find about this book. It does have some limitations in its locality. Uh, she does give some examples of spells that I don't think anyone in their right mind would ever actually reproduce. Um, and of course, she talks about ingredients that most people aren't going to have available. Bear fat. So, but other than that, I would definitely recommend this book. Now, I will warn you, this is not a beginner's book. If you are just getting started in your practice, you're not going to find things in here that are going to teach you things that you need to know as a very, very beginner, okay? You will learn things. You will learn a lot of useful things, believe me. Um, but it might be a little overwhelming initially, and that's fine. You know, I mean, there are books that I know when I was a beginner, I, I read them and I was like, wow, this is a really good book, but I'm not ready for this. And that's okay. Um, for those of you who do have a little more experience and are looking for more in-depth information about some of the plants that you might want to be working with, highly recommend this book. Um, I really enjoyed reading this book. I mean, even just as, you know, just sort of bedtime reading, it was just a fun book to read. So... And it's definitely one that I'll be revisiting. So, recommend. A plus. Anyway, I have a few other books that I've been reading. I might get around to making a review since it's too damn hot to do anything else. So, we'll see. Seems like the very hottest parts of summer and the very coldest parts of winter are probably when I'm going to be covering book stuff. Because... Fun stuff. My camera stopped recording just as I was wrapping things up. But anyway, I'm trying to regain a very lost train of thought, but um, yeah, you might see a few more of these out of me. We'll see. But um, anyway, I'm just going to wrap this up because I don't even remember what I was talking about anymore. I had to find where my camera cut off and review the video and all kinds of stuff like that before I could come back and finish this. So um, I just want to say that if you have read any of the books in this series, Under the Witching Tree, um, Under the Bramble Arch, that's the other one, and you want to talk about it, by all means, do so. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you haven't read these books and this has helped to give you some useful information, then I'm happy. I hope that it uh, serves its purpose in that regard. Other than that, I just hope that this video finds you well, and I will see you again soon.